The decline and death of Rover is one of the cruelest in British automotive history. From the vanguard of technology, to the BL turmoil of the 70s, to its final bout under MG Rover, where its final act would play out in a cruel irony, the City Rover, a rebadged Tartar Indica. But what if the rumours of Rover being resurrected again were true? Reborn again for a new era, following the same pattern as its downfall two decades ago. This is a widely circulated theory that would have an incredible impact on the heritage of a once prestigious British brand, resurrecting it in almost the same way it met its fate in 2005. But this isn't just about cars, this is far more serious. The Rover brand could be used to do battle with MG in the great geopolitical EV manufacturing war with Rover in India and MG in China battling it for supremacy, riding the wave of the next great car extinction in 2030. Two former stablemates pitted against each other. This is the most likely way Rover could return to our roads and why we may want the mark once thought so fondly of to stay in the past and how these rumours may have some merit. Hello everybody and welcome to this video. If you're not subscribed already, please make sure to do so. It really does help me out and you get to see more of this. More history videos, more cars and conversions uncovered, and more projects like my Rover SD1. And a fleet update is coming on Monday because I've actually had a chance to film one. This video is on Rover's return and how Tata could bring the brand back to sell cheaper EVs and cheaper cars in the late 2020s. What is your opinion on this controversial subject? Let me know in the comments below. And do you have any Rover memories? Make sure to like the video if you liked it, but without further delay, let's get into Rover's return. To understand this theory, we first need to look at Rover's rocky badge engineering past. Rovers of old were classy, distinguished, and technologically advanced cars, but after the great BL blunder, Rover would find itself becoming victim to the same practice that killed brands like Riley, badge engineering. The old process mainly used by BMC permeated into Austin Rover, with cars like the Rover Quintet in Australia. But Rover's relationship with Honda would have a silver lining, as it would be more or less equal partners with the Japanese giant in developing its models for the 80s and 90s. At the turn of the millennium, Rover would find itself in a predicament once again. The Rover 75 had been launched and then promptly sabotaged by BMW's PR mistake. BMW would then offload Rover and MG and keep Land Rover and sell on Jaguar. The company would then find itself under new management, under the Phoenix 4, as MG Rover. The Phoenix 4 after Le Mans and many other outings were finding that Rover were cash strapped and without the necessary drive for a management to continue pursuing the new cars, like the RDX 60, MG Rover resorted to an old trick, badge engineering. First would be Proton. The Malaysian car maker sought closer ties to a more established company. Rover had the expertise. Proton had the money and the models. Ideas would be explored by both in the early 2000s to change the front end and rebadge Proton cars as Rovers, such as the Proton Gen 2. This would end in 2004, putting Rover's new car plans in jeopardy. Rover in 2004 were desperate. The RDX 60 had been canned due to the company's awful balance sheet. The Proton deal had gone sour, leaving MG Rover without the much needed new models. The 25 and 45 platforms were now nearly 10 years old. A replacement was needed, fast to succeed in the bread and butter models that kept the company afloat. Cruelly, at the same time, Rover Group's Mini, now BMW's, was smashing it in sales. The Mini was exactly what Rover needed, but BMW had taken this lifeline away. Hatchbacks and small cars were king after the MPV and SUV boom had ended, and one company had a small car it was looking to sell in Europe. That company was Tata Motors. The Tata Indica launched in 1998 was the easiest option. It was a proven small reliable car that could be produced in volume. Rover and Tata would enter talks in around 2002 and launch the car known as the City Rover in 2003. The Rover brand had been forever marred with the City Rover 
the troubles of the 70s with the SD1's poor build quality, the uncertainty of the early 80s and the offloading by BMW in 2000 were nothing compared to this. The City Rover was not a traditional Rover, it wasn't a Rover at all. The Rover 75 had tried to and managed to go back to the era of the sophisticated Rovers, but the City Rover had completely blindsided the car buying public. The brand was in tatters. The Tata Indicas were simply shipped over in kits, assembled and then roverized with badges and grills. If all that made a Rover a Rover was some badges and a grill, the brand was doomed. MG Rover would collapse in 2005, ending the Rover name for good. SAIC would try to purchase the brand, but thanks to its close ties to the Land Rover name, it would be given as a package deal by BMW to Ford. The Rover mark would follow Land Rover to Tata's acquisition, and the creation of Jaguar Land Rover. And this is where the theory takes hold. The rumours of Rover's 2026 return. Jaguar Land Rover cars occupy a specific segment of the market, at the premium end. SAIC were unsuccessful with their acquisition of Rover, but did manage to get hold of MG, recreating the brand under MG Motor UK, with cars such as the MG4, ZS and HS, aiming towards the mid to low end of the market, which has the most volume in sales. SAIC, with its Nebula platform developed in China, has been accused by many of using the MG name as a vassal brand to flood the UK and European market with cheap EVs. But this is a matter of opinion. For better or worse, no matter your opinion, the MG name is back on the road. This leaves Tata and many other companies with a clear strategy. A proven one that has seen MG to record sales and increased market share. Pre-2014, MG cars were a rare sight on the road. Now, they are everywhere. Tata has expressed over the years its desire to expand into Europe and beyond. But it wouldn't risk its current premium brands on cheaper models based on its own cars. Therefore, it could use a dormant brand, one that it's had in its ownership since it took over to create Jaguar Land Rover. This brand is the Rover name. This would be an easy way for Tata to launch several of its cars in Europe, adding a bit of brand prestige to its models. The relatively unknown to the car buying public Tata Motors would launch itself by leeching brand prestige from a now almost forgotten brand. The Rover brand, even though it has been tarnished in the eyes of the car buying public, who are around in the 70s and 80s, the younger car buyers could potentially buy into the prestige and brand heritage, and its close relation to Land Rover. Cars like the P5, P6, SD1 and Rover 800 could be used to sell the new generation rebadged Tata cars. But this couldn't be done with just any car, like the Tygo. That simply wouldn't wash. The memories of Top Gear's City Rover Exposé haven't quite faded just yet, so a small car wouldn't be the ideal, and the market currently is dominated by the crossover. Tata would probably pick its Harrier, Nexon and new Safari for roverization. Their low to mid range would go head to head with cars like the MG HS, ZS and MG4, with the potential to expand the range further. But Tata and Rover do have a problem, a dealer network. MG currently has 153 dealers across the UK, with four recent additions, this is still growing. Tata and Rover could use Tesla's distribution model, limited dealerships and base themselves online, or perhaps tag onto a dealer network like Land Rover, using the glitz and glamour of the Range Rover and its sister models to draw people in. PR would be an easy one. The return of MG was received quite well by motoring journalists and most of the public, who had largely forgotten the days of old MG. Rover would be more of the same. The automotive world in Europe would erupt with elation. That Rover is back. You would of course have the sceptics. For Tata, influencer backing, good advertisements and cheap well-made cars would be enough to wash over the criticism and if brilliant minds were seconded from Jaguar Land Rover, it would no doubt be a success if executed correctly. Rover would be back and free to use its legacy models in the same way MG has, to promote its new offering. The perception of a stable brand with heritage to match would persuade many buyers. So, when could this happen? 
Well, probably in around 2026 and beyond. In the UK's march towards the ice ban in 2030, there will no doubt be several car-killing scrappage schemes, like the ones in London for ULES, and the Birmingham Clean Air Zone, which offers drivers £2,000 towards a new EV. If the new Rover was to be introduced before 2030, 2030 would allow it to gain significant market share, thanks to the government intervention. The scrappage scheme of yesteryear would decimate the legacy models, but would provide new life for the relaunch of Rover. Rover cars would come over in droves, in the same way as the MGs, providing a cheap and easy way to get into a new EV by flooding the market. India and China would do battle with two of Britain's marks in the battle for car manufacturing supremacy. Both at present have well-established automotive industries, so India would just need a brand to ramp up the volume. Rover and MG once stable mates would battle it out in the 2030s for different countries. The Rover Harrier could be doing battle with the MG HS or ZS. And looking at Tata's expansion plans, this might be the most plausible way Rover could return to our roads, for better or for worse. You may also think that Tata could rebadge its own cars as Land Rovers or Range Rovers, but this simply wouldn't work. The Land Rover brand is Tata's crown jewel, they wouldn't want to risk it. Rover is its intellectual property, and one that has not been used in decades. It would make sense to roll the dice using Rover's name, and with MG's example, this is probably what will happen. The new beginning for Rover would be the same as its demise, rebadging other people's cars. A sad and cruel twist in Rover's legacy, meaning some would rather see Rover kept in the past, free from further embarrassment. But some would also argue that these Tatars could be a launch pad for a new Rover, which could be a good thing. And that is the end of the video. What is your opinion of Rover's return as a rebadged Tatar? Let me know in the comments below. Personally, I think this has about a 60% chance of happening, if the rumours are correct. I've been asked to cover this one several times, so I thought it would be a great video to make, to get your opinion, and perhaps some more information. It would be a cruel and ironic way to bring back a brand that we all love. But with Tata's Gigafactory plans in the UK, we could potentially see Rover's return to UK manufacturing. But that is just speculation. And it's the end of the video. So as always, thank you for watching, keep watching, and remember to subscribe for more of this, and I'll see you in the next one.